Well, hello, hello. Welcome back to the big board. <clears throat> the TCS system, tactical combat series from uh, the gamers. Back in the day, the 80s juggernaut of detailed wargaming. Way back when I uh, first re-engaged with wargame stuff, uh, gosh, it's probably 11 or 12 years ago now, I guess. I can't believe how time, how fast that time's gone by. I uh, f had found or discovered uh, the uh, Board Game Geek group and was looking through all these war games. I couldn't believe it. This is all this fantastic stuff. And then I struck upon the OCS system and the TCS system from the gamers. And, you know, was it now it was owned by MMP and all that sort of good stuff. So I missed all that history. I'd never seen any of these games when I was a war gamer lad. <laughs> Uh, as a 12 year old through uh, through college days uh, uh, MMP I don't believe it ex existed then or the game is, probably didn't exist then if it did it would have been the very very early days so I saw these games and I couldn't understand what to choose or how to choose something whether it would be OCS or this more tactical stuff and as I got into it I started reading and asking people questions, dumb, mostly dumb questions, because I literally did not understand. Nor at the time did I know that there was the Gamers Archive where I could download all this stuff and read all these rules and see everything and actually get on this thing called Vassal. <laughs> 11 years ago, days were different. And uh, so this game was one of the ones that popped up to me that looked very interesting. It wasn't the first game I bought. I think I bought Bloody 110 first. And then uh, maybe GD42 after that. But this was the third one. And the one that was most interesting to me just because of the struggle uh, between the two forces, right? We all kind of want to cheer for the Finns, but they're ally allied. Uh, well, at this point, they're not allied with, uh, with the Nazis, but became allied with the Nazis. And you've got the Soviets who are invading. They want their land back or they want to take some land, depending on whose history you believe. And this was all fought in outrageously difficult terrain, outrageously difficult weather conditions. And post-World War I haven't quite worked out tactics yet. You know, people are still working out that, you know, wave formations are a bad idea. But... So this, this sort of nexus of change is what's interesting. We've got, uh, there's actually Maxim machine guns on this map somewhere uh, and uh, the, or, or the equivalent for the Russians. And so th this was uh, a, a new type of warfare that was evolving. And I think uh, the leadership of this particular battle really did a great job of uh, kind of fighting that sort of almost insurgent style warfare but perhaps at a more intense level. That's kind of what I took away from it. So fighting over icy lakes in uh, the Suomi, I think it's called, and you know, this marshy, woody, frozen, tundra-style terrain and sparse woods and things. It's uh, This is all wooded terrain here. Anyway, so I got the game and I started uh, setting it up and looking at it and then realized that it was a bit of a hot mess and there was a set of rules that apparently you needed to download and find that were going to fix it. But then all the people that were doing that said, you know, you really should wait till Red Winter comes out. Well, Red Winter came out several years ago. I bought Red Winter, read all the stuff, played it several times, enjoyed it immensely, different scale company scale versus platoon scale. You know, we've got a couple of battalions of forces and potentially uh, two regiments of uh, Soviets fighting these uh, Finnish chaps. And uh, this is company scale uh, 420. This this game is uh, 425 meters a hex and, com and company scale. And this is platoon scale. And I think hexes are either 75 or 125 meters. I can't remember on, on this particular module. But anyway, uh, so this was going to fix, Red Winter was going to fix all the sort of uh, OB issues, the order of battle problems that were prevalent and all that sort of stuff. And I played the game and looked at it and looked at these draft rules and went, well, I'm still not really sure what to do. So I kind of put it all on one side. Well, after a weekend of chasing my, my tail, I think I've got it squared away as to what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I've got the revised rules organized and I've got the errata inserted into the 
official rule book uh, for this module and we're getting after it. Uh, it's now the midday turn and the, the Finns have made some minor adjustments. Uh, based on the setup instructions, you didn't have to, you could choose the formation that you were going to put the, this triple P7 uh, formation in. And I could probably look up what that formation is, but there's a chance of me being able to pronounce it. It's pretty low. Uh, they're all very low quality units. They've got these four rated, uh, if you're a TCS player, you'll know what that means. They're four on the right in the red boxes, their morale rating. The higher the number, the worse, uh, worse it is. Uh, ones are great, obviously. And uh, so we dug them in. Uh, I didn't see any rule saying I couldn't. So uh, these chaps are all dug in. This formation, this uh, battalion, the ERP-112, they uh, have to roll for random casualties, as does this other force uh, on the casualty table. It doesn't explain why there's no rule defining what the casualty table is for. We can assume it's for pre-existing uh, prior combat, I guess. Uh, I don't know, or just the units are incomplete or whatever the case may be. They're not in a uh, prepared defense mode. They are in a hasty defense mode. So they're just kind of situated here, looking to assist and uh, defend here and be uh, basically a fire brigade, a very powerful fire brigade, because you can see these guys all have five ones, right? Now, we're taking two off the firepower for all of the... Oh, where was that guy? Dang it. I forget. What is he? One one. He must be over here, somewhere. He would have been in a building, though. Hmm. Maybe it was in the woods. Uh, so I'm going to take two off all of the fins because they didn't have as many SMGs, submachine guns, as uh, this game thought, and so we've adjusted that, and we've also taken down the. Uh, there's a submachine gun platoon in the Soviets that has a six rating where we're re-rating that back down to a regular rifle platoon. We're also taking off all of the uh, 50 millimeter mortars from the so from the Soviets and making some other changes and things like that. Some artillery stuff that's all kind of, you know, on the periphery of being meaningful. So we've got these guys set up in defense. I've got this 1st Regiment uh, coming on board here, sorry, 1st Battalion uh, coming on board here, and uh, we've got one, uh, sorry, Battalion, Regiment, Company, <laughs> God, today, no, it's not that day, I've got one company coming around to try and uh, get behind the these Finnish forces, you can't see that, so let's move the camera, I'm on, uh, so as I was saying, this formation is going to come around the island here, up onto this road, and try and weave their way towards this area. Man, I'm not having a good day there. This area here, capture this hilltop. Uh, these forces are going to go this way and, and do that. And this one other company is going to take care of this, uh, capturing this bridge and securing this area and pushing that back. Back uh, a little bit further, there's a battalion behind here. There's a battalion here and here. They're all marching up, and their job is to take this island, the Kotasari Island. And they will be tasked with doing that. Doesn't look really hard at the moment, does it? Because I have not uh, moved forward any forces to slow down the advance. And I don't think I'm going to. As the Finns, I'm going to sit back, let the Russians come to us across the ice, either in daylight or at night. Either way, I am confident that uh, the modifiers <laughs> that they will get come across the ice, if they try and come this way, are going to be brutal. If they do uh, decide to come uh, you know, around this flank, we got a different fight on our hands, but that's going to take a lot of time as well. And uh, I think we can we can hold hold them long enough to put some bring some reinforcements in if this becomes the main thrust. Uh, so so it's going to be an interesting little battle. Obviously, the some of the key features of the historical battle was this hotel that is here. 
and this uh, gravel pit formed a very large portion of the battle. Uh, the control of this spit and this bridge would uh, determine whether or not these roads could be used to force uh, or push additional uh, Soviet forces uh, on towards other objectives uh, further to the west. So control of this bridge, control of these these items here and these hilltop locations are critical. Uh, there are other reinforcements that come in over time. It's a three-day battle. We'll see how far we get. Uh, uh, what I tend to do and make mistakes with is rushing too quickly into action. And uh, it was only by rereading the the historical uh, background in this particular module that uh, helped me reset my expectations about the speed with which we need to be advancing. And uh, also I had a very nasty combat result. Somewhere here, this guy took two step losses trying to come across the ice, just one step onto the ice, and then he was gonna come up onto this land portion here. And uh, these guys at range, mind you, at range with uh, negatives uh, being applied, uh, just shellacked this guy. It's a plus four column shift on your firepower if you're on the ice in daylight. Not nice. Anyway, so little introductory uh, squiz at a frozen hell. And uh, we've got our op sheets all written up. We have plans, and we're, uh, as a solo endeavor, I, I typically write up a small handful of plans for each side, particularly the attacking side, and then I'll just roll the die, and that will be their plan. Uh, and in this case, weren't really a lot of in innovative or clever options that we could take that were gonna be meaningfully different, so we've written up some plans, see how those evolve over time. All right, thought I'd share that with you and we will uh, talk to you soon. Uh, we'll probably check in at the uh, 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Time, time frame. All the best.